Friday, Minister of Housing and Water, the Honorable Colin Kroll, is expect works which have commenced for the International Building Expo, which is slated for August 24 to 27 here at the Ghana National Stadium. Minister also explained that the stadium will have a total different look from last year. Here is more from Minister Kroll. All right, so good morning and um, it's a pleasure to update you on where we are on Building Expo 2023. You recall that we officially launched the Building Expo two weeks ago, exactly two weeks ago. And in that short two weeks, we have about 45% of boots that have been paid for. And, I, you know, they have been much more interest, but um, I'm giving you those boots that have been paid for. So in essence, 45% of the boots uh, are gone. We're talking about 306, 86 possible boots. Um, where we are now, this is an addition that we're putting this year, and this will be our like our feature showcase. And that is, if you notice, you'll see you see something like a globe, and that you'll see the world being portrayed there, the context of Guyana where we at. And so we will be putting this on a globe behind me and rotating. And so persons can come here and this this will be their me pleasant memory from building expo 2023 the, the signature picture they can come and have that this entire area throughout the change we're making here is that one this is, will be the area where persons can come um, conversate can uh, recreate um, spend a little time relax while having walking having walked around and probably buy some of the snacks and refreshments when they're finished and then you can have your picture taken so we have the executive boots by and large the executive boots um, these are the single uh, boots, um, air conditioned. Uh, most of it is gone already. Where we have the most of the available space would be in the, the auditorium. That is in terms of the individual boots in the main, well, the main and then we have well, two main auditoriums. When you come to this expo, you, it's not just about seeing the routine that you can see every day. We want you to be able to leave here with new information, new technology and additional information too that will help you in, in making decisions for your own home construction or even repairs because you know people are changing over their their current house that they have so repairs expansion etc but it will be able to allow them to see you know the, other than the routine type of materials that person utilize and that is what we want to leave persons must leave this expo expo with enhanced knowledge and, the, and then once that happens certainly it means we we will have a successful expo minister also spoke about their dream realize which some 2,000 persons will benefit from so the dream realize will have two areas um, one day is for region 4 another portion of the area that we have on the east coast of Demara and the second well the first day for will be for region 3 uh, for persons from region 3 and we have a particular area that we have identified those persons will be notified and the other day is region 4 so those are the two regions for two days two days for a dream realize um, I don't foresee and that's why we reduced last year the staff work from morning till midnight yeah. and beyond so we cut that out too so we have a particular cut off time and then they come back the next day to continue for those persons who have been saying they've paid off for their lot and not able to access it, here is an update from Minister Kroll. Let, let's give the current mo uh, model that is there. So allocations that are currently being done now, right now, the infrastructure work will be next year because when we put in our budget and the allocations we receive, that the allocations that we have done, we have done this year will form the open areas that we will have to have resources to do. So that's the current model. So that timeline will say one year. Having said that, having gotten into office, there are a number of areas that we met for which infrastructure work was not done. And there are some areas for which we ourselves have allocated but has posed the challenge. So let me give you two. Everybody has asked about Cummings Lodge. So Cummings Lodge, we started, well, I may say the eastern end, of that team, well, previously it was 7068, 7067, so we can call it Plantation 1 and 2. So, where we build the houses for Cummings Lodge, and then we have allocation exercises that have been done throughout that goes all the way to Eccles for a different zoning. The, the area to develop, the land to develop, is P2 
pure bush it posed challenge access was a challenge because trucks had to come imagine we are you're going you can access some Aubrey Barker Road now imagine you have to drive all the way around Sophia come through Sophia then drive all the way back up from Sophia all the way up to Echoes or or to the south parallel of the area so that was another issue in terms of access so we've sorted out and the contractors are moving quickly we have already coming sludge is one of those areas people ask about and we have already started showing persons for coming sludge the high income areas where we at now and maybe in a month or two we'll start showing persons those areas then we have for example uh and this is one you see on social media there's an area in grove an area that we allocated when we came into office but we had challenge there this is at the back of caneville and so we had challenge in terms of the area with drainage the east bank is as we go eastward or inward if whichever one you want to see because eastward from that way you're going to land that is posing some challenge in terms of being swamp per se and that's because they didn't have drainage these are lands were there and they didn't have to drain because no one occupied them so we are addressing with drainage in the dni of with truly ministry of agriculture a massive drainage program for the entire east bank and so as we address that now the contractors are able to access their areas and that is why we had some delays in the infrastructure work for east bank but for those areas that we have allocated 2021 except those two areas that i've just highlighted and that is growth block 18 grove a lot of persons write on those on social media the, all other areas persons should be able to and should by now be contacted to access the area or show their land so the infrastructure work that we have ongoing is for really last year meaning 2021 2022 allocations and we have a few this year that we are, we have done on the east coast that luckily those persons that can be able to get access by the end of this year because of what we've met and the gap in the housing sector we have not been able to reach to that level of doing infrastructure work and then allocating we do not have that luxury the, the pending applicants are so much um, in fact if you go in our lms system it show you about eight or something thousand we have allocated 24,100 plus a lot is since we were in office august 2020 to now meaning july 24,100 of that 24,100 you can quantify about 15,000 have already been shown where their land is so this is another huge opportunity for the banks insurance companies construction sector because people will be building on their own look between our acts we're here on east bank so look between the access road that we built where the four lane is and then the access road that we have built prior what ends at six and seven three diamond look both sides left and right all persons can access those lands and in fact they've started to build you we'll just look between maybe mocker road to diamond and you'll understand what i'm getting at those are all people who have been allocated in this pvp tenure they have access and they can now build and of course we are addressing at the same time water because you have existing customers that are complaining about the water pressure then you have new customers which is pulling the, the, the demand so more wells are being drilled here um, for accommodate new housing areas here on the east bank a lot of complaints we are addressing it in a massive way and unfortunately in the last three months or so the diamond well diamond well that was servicing so many customers uh, we could not resuscitate it became inoperable so we we have now commenced drilling a new well there so diamond residents are affected and that's the original diamond i'm speaking of they are all affected people on the Covent garden etc highway we're drilling additional wells for them we had a well um closer with lockfoot where we had an issue we built and we drilled a new well at swan and we're building a drilling additional wells to take care of the highway um, another aspect of highway we will target now you recall his excellency the president someone asked me earlier so i'm sure it's on the top of our agenda so much work to do but all has to be done we call his excellency had alluded to regularization of the highway but in clusters meaning not that we're putting people everywhere they're occupying identifying there were three areas that were identified that we could shift persons to to regularize them and develop that area that will take up some of our time um, from for the rest of the year so there's a lot of work ongoing but all what is to help people to have a better life people to be comfortable nobody wants and that's why when 
you go home and don't get water. I can understand your concern. Nobody wants when you get off from work, whatever rigor you go through during the day, to get home in the afternoon and the last thing you want is to get the water or to deal with having to deal with your tenants or having to deal with um, encumbrances or having to deal with inconvenience, etc. wherever you live. So yes, we want to help home ownership, home building. It costs a lot of money. Your president understands this and that's why he has been leading the chart in terms of helping us to get additional resources. Like for example, the 100 million US dollars through the Saudi funds is to enhance for housing sector. And you'll continue to see that. And similarly, you'll see construction of houses continuing. You've heard him yesterday evening in his visit, alluded to more construction of houses. Of course, we need contractors to get on board. And lastly, Minister, congratulations on the single window bill that oh, passed thank you. last night. I know that's a good achievement for the CHPA and the Ministry of Housing. It's an achievement for Guyana because the single window, it will transform the entire sector of how we do business again and change a mindset. So, you know, we watch news, we visit our family overseas, and you see how things are done by just holding on your phone. Everything is transacted on your phone. Similarly, we're getting there. So you do an online application, you do upload all your documents, and then it goes through the course. This is a dynamic change we're talking about. Versus you have to go to an office, deal with some official, sit and wait, then have to follow up on your own where your application is because CHP is waiting on the local authority to respond, waiting on Fireboard, waiting on EPA. So all of these agencies, the one-stop place that will be is the CHPA. It goes there and then it simultaneously goes to the relevant agencies that have to give their no objection and then their feedback is provided, hence their approval follow. So it's predictability, eliminating subjectivity because if I don't like you, then I say, oh, your application probably have to wait long on my desk. It happens, you know, it, it, it happens. And so it removes all of that, removes the aspect about maybe political favoritism, political uh, sabotage, and even in some cases, corruption too, because you eliminate somebody, think that they have a duty or work to do, and you have to give them something to do their own work. All of that in a layman term, this bill will eliminate and address. But on the whole, is bringing dynamism to government ways of doing business. Similarly, Minister of Tourism uh, uh, is have a similar bill that to address in terms of single window, and that is in terms of for businesses uh, registration. And so, shortly you'll see similarly what is a change that is happening. So you have predictability, and that is what we want. You know that you you will follow the, all the guidelines. You made your application, then you expect or anticipate a timely and a positive response. This year theme for Building Expo is Building for All, One Guyana, Many Opportunities. Until our next update on International Building Expo here at the Guyana National Stadium, this is Amanda saying goodbye. <laughs>